Rocky Marciano defeated the old mongoose Archie Moore on September 21st, 1955. It was a historic affair, one where the light heavyweight champion again failed to beat the heavyweight champion. If Moore had won, he would have become the oldest heavyweight champion ever. 30 years later to that day, Larry Holmes and Michael Spinks would meet in an equally significant September to remember. If you want more on that history, click or tap the bubble in the top right corner. On April 27th, 1956, seven months after Marciano's triumph, he retired on top, establishing a benchmark that has yet to have been topped. 49 wins, no losses. The only heavyweight champion to retire undefeated. He was only 32 years old. The boxing world immediately sought to fill the void of the heavyweight champion with a tournament that has become almost lost to time. Let's fix that. You probably already know that Archie Moore and Floyd Patterson clashed for the vacant title in a historically significant bout. But did you know also that the IBC, International Boxing Club, a prominent promotional outfit of the era that dissolved in 1960, organized a five-man tournament to determine the new champion? Yes, a five-man tournament. Wrap your head around that. I'll explain later how this still worked out. Given that Jim Norris helmed the IBC and he was very corrupt, maybe it makes sense why this will unfold the way it did. The featured fighters were Archie Moore, Tommy Hurricane Jackson, Bob Baker, Johnny Holman, and Floyd Patterson. They were ranked in that order as contenders. Bob Baker and Johnny Holman started the festivities on May 9th of 1956 in a dull 12 round win for Baker. Despite his claims that he should fight the winner of Floyd Patterson and Hurricane Jackson, the speculation was that the affair eliminated both men. The fact that this became reality had to be infuriating for Baker. It's funny, considering a similar comment made at the conclusion of the WBA tournament over a decade later. Holman was a career journeyman whose biggest win was over Ezra Charles. He was retired by Cleveland Big Cat Williams in 1957. Patterson and Jackson met on June 8th of 1956, and Floyd scored a 12-round split decision win. Many believed Patterson won convincingly. Jackson said after how Archie Moore would kill the young Patterson, as he wasn't even as tough as Bob Baker. Patterson broke a bone in his right hand, but it was assured the bout with Moore would still go on in September. Before we get to the finale, you're probably wondering what Archie Moore was up to. Well, staying active, of course. He even defended the light heavyweight title once. Ah, the privilege of being number one contender, and it puts into perspective why Joe Frazier refused to enter the WBA tournament a decade later. Man. That 1967 tournament just keeps coming up. Okay, now for more in Patterson. It was historic in that the winner would become either the youngest or oldest heavyweight champion in history. On November 30th, 1956, Floyd Patterson scored an underdog fifth round knockout of 39-year-old Archie Moore. At 21 years old, he'd usurped Joe Lewis as the youngest heavyweight champion ever. Lewis was 23. Patterson, a protege of Cus Diamato, would hold this record until 1986, when a likewise protege of Cus's earned the honor. This was Mike Tyson. Bob Baker, the snubbed would-be obstacle in Floyd Patterson's way, never got a shot at the young champion. Back in 1954, Archie Moore had stopped him in nine rounds, and we know Moore fell to Patterson. Maybe we can live with that even though I personally dislike the triangle theory in boxing. Patterson and Jackson met again on July 29th of 1957. Floyd TKO Tommy in round 10, perhaps a get back for Jackson's comments about him after their first match. Baker never stopped Jackson, so who was really tougher? It was Floyd's first title defense and after an eight month layoff, the longest of his career. Patterson had a healthy enough reign as champ, the Ingemar Johansson trilogy being the standout, but the growing shadow of Sonny Liston ultimately engulfed him. 
in spite of Cus's insistence of protecting his champion. Still, his being the once youngest champion and the first man to recapture the heavyweight crown have made him immortal. For the full story of the 1950s heavyweight division, well, you'll have to wait, but it is coming and will be available in a bubble to click or tap in the top right corner down the line here on Boxingpedia. I hope you enjoyed this teaser of a timeline of the 1950s heavyweight boxing division.